Welcome back. All right, so news of the day video time for all you fine people for your Monday, June 13th. Uh, here are the items to be discussed for today. So there you go. You got all that, all that written down and everything. And uh, yeah, so there we go. And of course, there's the chapters in the video as well. Uh, that's what I write down the, the timestamps for is for the chapters when the video is all done. It's the only time I have to write timestamps now. I don't have to worry about it for reviews because there's just the one game. So it would just be zero, zero, zero in that game. It doesn't make any sense. You're already there. So you don't need to click on you're already in that chapter. So it's all fine. All right. So we're going to start things off talking about Miko Koskinen. And one of the worst kept secrets was Koskinen going to Switzerland. Uh, he signed with Logano. It's a two-year deal. It's probably the end of his NHL uh, career. Uh, and he's played a lot in Europe, so he's comfortable playing in Europe. He came over, and he, he got a, a really good contract in Edmonton and played that out. At times, looked pretty good. At times, he struggled. But in the end, I think that goaltending, while well, it's going to be a discussion with the Oilers throughout the offseason, and now it's, do they bring Smith back? He's got one year left on his deal. What are they going to do to make more cap space? I I think that, you know, Koskinen did his job as well as he could, and I wish him the best in the Swiss League. And, yeah, that's that's probably it for him at the NHL unless after that two-year deal is done, or unless there's an out after the first year. Sometimes guys get, have an out as well. I'll sign here, but I if I get a job in the NHL, I'm out of here. But it's, it's possible he ends up back in the NHL as a backup at some point. Uh, but, yeah, so for right now, he's back in Switzerland. Or, well, he's in Switzerland, and uh, all the best to him. All right, moving along. The uh, New York Rangers making news today. Uh, they have brought back Vitaly Kravtsov, the agent for Vitaly Kravtsov, tweeting out about that yesterday, and the team confirming it as well, that he is back. And, of course, Kravtsov's had a tumultuous relationship with the New York Rangers thus far. Uh, talented forward, a lot of upside there. And bringing him back is going to increase questions about whether or not they signed him to trade him. There was discussions of that. Whether they signed him to bring him in and play him and then trade somebody else. Where Capo Caco's name might show up. That kind of thing. But either way, uh, for the New York Rangers, it's it's an easy move to make. You've, you've signed the guy. You've got the rights to him anyways. It's an $875,000 cap hit. That's easy enough. And so we'll see what other moves get made. They also signed uh, Gustav Riedahl to a one-year contract, 27 years of age. So you don't sign a 27-year-old if you don't think he's coming over to play for your club. So, yeah, uh, odds are he at least gets a look at training camp. Maybe he ends up playing in their bottom six. And so that would be two players added uh, since they were eliminated from the playoffs just a couple of days ago. So really, you know, it, it doesn't take long before teams start making changes. And so the Rangers being proactive here and again, it's their own prospect, costs them nothing to bring him in, and then they pick up a player from Europe. Uh, teams have a 50 contract limit, so it, it's not that hard at this time of year to find some room. And and uh, not that many teams ended up at the 50 contract limit last time I looked anyways. So there's that. But anyways, um, so this is an interesting one that the NHL uh, public relations account tweeted out. And I thought about it. I thought, yeah, this is an odd Stanley Cup final. It is the first time ever that two teams with a singular nickname have met in the playoffs. So it is the Lightning, not the Lightnings. The Avalanche, not the Avalanches. So that's kind of an odd one, right? Um, and I, you know, I was thinking through, thinking it through, and going, yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Normally, a team name will be something that you know, Golden Knights, Capitals, Penguins, Flyers, but. Kraken. So maybe that's more hope for Seattle. Maybe this is going to be a trend and maybe the Seattle Kraken end up in the Stanley Cup final next year against the Lightning and we see it all over again. It's highly unlikely that takes place, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will be like, there you go, 2023 Stanley Cup final. THG's confirmed it. I'm not, but sure, sure, we go, we'll go with that. Uh, but it, it is one of those interesting little factoids, so I figured throw it in the news of the day video and see what people think of that. And I'd be interested, too, to look through, like, other sports, other North American sports, and see what the odds are of that happening in any other sport goes to. But anyways, there you go. Now, in regards to the Stanley Cup final that starts in two days, uh, the channel vote is currently at, and has been pretty much since I posted it, 60% voting in favor of Colorado winning that series. 40% say that Tampa Bay is going to win the Stanley Cup. 
And so for Tampa Bay, they are underdogs. Now, I believe they were underdogs in the first round against Toronto. Were they? No. I'm trying to, th I'm thinking back to, <laughs> see, and this is one of those things where it's on your channel. Yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah, Tampa Bay being an underdog, it feels like that might be the first time because I'm thinking back to, did people take Toronto over Tampa? Anyways, uh, being underdogs is not a big deal for Tampa any more than the fact that they've been excellent on the road. They've also been excellent. Well, they've been good on the road, excellent at home. Uh, they did win that game against the Rangers. They seem to get the road wins when they need them, but at home in the playoffs, they're 7-1. and one. So it really is a matter of them being able to get at least a win in Colorado and then play at home the way that they have been because by my count, uh, it is seven home wins in a row. So it really is going to be who blinks first on the road uh, or who blinks first at home, I should say, and, and gives a road team a victory. That may very well be the deciding factor to who wins the Stanley Cup this year. So we'll see, right? Um, I am hoping for a six or seven game series. I think those are always more entertaining than the, the sweeps or the ones that are over in five. Just personally, just my opinion. Uh, but hey, uh, let's talk about the Canucks. So the Canucks today have signed Philip Johansson. Now, Johansson was a number 24 pick in 2018 for the Minnesota Wild. The Wild chose not to offer him a contract. So the Canucks pick up a defenseman. He is 22 years of age. He was playing in Fralunda this past season. I, I like it. I, I think that's good. You're picking up a guy who was a first round pick in 2018. And you've now signed him to a contract. And again, the Canucks definitely have an affinity for players born in Sweden. So, all right, bring him in. We'll see how things work out. And maybe that's a defenseman that ends up making a difference for them as soon as next year. Because again, being 22 years of age, you would think that if he's going to be ready, it has to be either this year, maybe midway through the 2022-2023 through the season, or at the very least the following year. But again... It is that time of year. You've got 50 contracts. There's no point in having those extra ones out there. If you can go out and sign somebody. And the Canucks may not be done. Because this week, uh, Andre Kuzmenko, who's been talked about a lot as being a, an in-demand free agent out of the KHL, Kuzmenko is meeting this week with the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks. So the teams are in direct competition for the player. Uh, he is a forward I think if he wants the better opportunity, it might be Edmonton. Honestly, it might be Edmonton because with the uncertainty around free agents and, and restricted free agents and cap space and all these things for Edmonton, he might have a good chance of playing either with Dreisaitl or McDavid next year if he can come in and impress in training camp. Whereas with Vancouver, he's not going to have the opportunity to play with McDavid or Dreisaitl. So there, there's that, right? That's something that the Oilers can can potentially at least offer, dangle out there, that the Canucks can't. I mean, they can offer you guys, you can play against McDavid and, and Dreisaitl four times a year. It's not quite the same offer, though, is it? So we'll see where Kuzmeko ends up signing. I would be kind of surprised if he doesn't sign in Edmonton. But again, Vancouver's been pretty good at picking up players. Maybe Alvin and Rutherford can talk him into it. And so we shall see. Now, coming back to the Stanley Cup final, Braden Point, his status unknown, and they're saying he's extremely probable for the final. That's not, he's playing, he's extremely probable. So, yeah, um, we'll see. But if Braden Point plays in the final, that would be a huge difference maker for Tampa, a team that has won two rounds without Braden Point. One of their best players, arguably an MVP for the team at points from 2020 until now. And so if they get him back, that could be a huge game changer. So again, teams are being very cagey about injuries at this time of the season. They don't tell us everything. They're not going to tell us everything. So maybe maybe Point's not going to play. But at the very least, they're, they're saying the right things to keep Colorado from being 100% sure of who is or isn't going to be in the lineup for Tampa. And that makes a difference as you're getting ready for that opponent. Because if Point goes in... That, that definitely changes up the lines for Tampa. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think Braden Point plays in the final or not? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And for the record, nope. Um, there hasn't been any ruling out of Cogliano for the first game on Wednesday. I think they've ruled out Kadri. But I, I know they've talked about whether or not he might play during the finals. So we shall see. But it'll be interesting to watch. I will be here to watch it and then review it for all you fine people when it takes place. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.